Have you guys ever seen the skeleton of a GMC Acadia? Let's take a look at one of these. Let's get started. So welcome back guys, another hot sweltering day in Kansas. I've been providing bottled waters for my guys, nice and chilled in a cooler, and we've gone through four cases this week, and I don't blame them. It's so hot out here. So yes, we have a GMC Acadia in the shop, and it is being torn down for a rear main seal. We got a lot of information to cover today, really shocking information, crazy things. We're going to show you guys not so much the interior, we're not going to do a walk around today. We're going to actually look at some of the engine components, what's wrong with this car, what's commonly wrong with these cars. And if you're out to look to buy one of these, what can you expect? What should you look for? So this is the 2015 GMC Acadia. And you guys know in the past that I recommended not to buy the Acadia, Traverse, Equinox, any of those family of, of vehicles. This one's actually in pretty good shape. It does have some issues that the customer, which is a used car dealer, is going to go ahead and have us fix because they want to have quality vehicles on their lot. No, it is not Euro-Asian Bob. But we're going to get a few things fixed. They were concerned, as they should be, about timing chain issues with this vehicle. They did have check engine light on, and they were like, uh-oh, did we get burned here? And fortunately, they did not. Now, there's an insane amount of work. It's going to be very expensive. But at the beginning, you just saw me show the subframe is out. We're taking that out to remove the transmission and do a rear main seal on this. What's really crazy to me is I've done a lot of work for used car dealers. And rightfully so, they don't want to dump too much money into the cars because they themselves have to make money. And I get that, I totally get it. If you spent five grand on a car that sells for seven, it doesn't make business sense to put another five grand into it. Then you sell the car for a loss, and if you keep that up for very long, you will be declaring bankruptcy. Used car dealers are not restoration specialists. They do not restore cars to full capacity, and that's why. But we are living in a really weird time right now. A lot of people complain about prices at shops. Oh, it's so much to fix a car, but yet we're having people right now paying double the value of one of these cars, or any car that's used, and have zero complaints. Say, bro, you just took a $10,000 truck and you paid eighteen dollars for it, and you're like, hell yeah, I did. I'll buy another one tomorrow if I could. It's like, wait a minute, these are the same people that were complaining about high prices in the shop, and yet they just ripped themselves off that hard, really hard rip off. I don't know, it's kind of weird. EuroAsian Bob has talked about cars at the dealer auction selling for retail price at the auction and then jacking the price up from there to sell them on the lot and people are buying them up like hotcakes. You could go by the local new car dealer or used car dealer right now in your area and you'll see that a lot of the lots are empty right now because people are snatching up these cars. So based on that fact, this bill is going to be around $4,000. We're doing so much to this car. And it actually makes sense only because of the weird economic boom we're in. They can pay this large bill and still make money. It's, I don't fault them. I think they're making a wise choice. Why not get the thing fully up to snuff? We can still make money and have a happy customer because everything's fixed. So that kind of makes sense. I totally get it. Let's take a look what's going on with this Acadia. So I'm going to show you guys another one of those scenarios where it's like walking in on a loved one during open heart surgery. If this is an owner of a car, not a used car dealer, but an actual owner of the car and they walked in here, they literally probably could, their blood pressure would go up. They would be like, oh my God, the whole bottom of the car is missing. Yes, it is. In order to get to the rear main seal, which is between the engine and transmission right here, the transmission has to come off. It has to be separated. And that is an engine out job. These can be done with the engine still in. You remove the subframe, which you have to remove in either scenario. And you just tilt the engine and pull the transmission out the side. And we should be able to save the customer a little money. If we can save a few hours for them, we're going to do that. 
but that will save so much disconnecting hoses and lines and freon and stuff on the engine maybe make the build a little cheaper for them we have a brace across the top that's holding the engine up we're using this very heavy duty ranger transmission jack from ben pack that they supplied to us ours actually died and i got a hold of them and they said no problem one is on its way as we speak this thing is very heavy duty so magic mike's actually doing this job and he's doing a very good job we're about halfway maybe getting close to three quarters of the way done with this we just got to get this transmission out the seal is not a hard job it's getting to it is what's so hard and expensive okay Pat wizard so the customer came in thinking that maybe the timing change was a problem how did you determine it wasn't so when these 3.6 gm engines it doesn't matter if it's an acadia a cadillac a chevy uh, it doesn't matter any of the vehicles that have this 3.6 liter are known to have timing chain problems, especially if there's poor oil change service. You will have two codes come up when the time comes that your timing chains need to be replaced. It never fails that when these codes are present, it's time for timing chains and guides and everything else. And that is P0008 and P0017. Those two codes will be present when the timing chains are screwed on this car. P0008 is a camshaft performance or engine performance code. It's where the computer's noticing that there's something going on, something's not right. And the 0017 code is camshaft crankshaft correlation. So if the crankshaft is at a certain position, the camshaft should also be at a certain position every time the engine turns around. When the computer starts seeing that it's way out of whack, I mean, it's actually a very small amount, but the computer can see it's not matched up. It's saying, I'm noticing that I should have seen the camshaft by now, and it's taking an extra one or two seconds to come by. That means it's out of time, the timing chains are stretched, and that's when the one, the 17 code, 0017 code comes up. So did this one have those two codes? It did not have those codes. And while the engine's running, you can use a scan tool, which I use the MS908 from Autel. That's pretty much what I use on all the cars, even exotic cars. Most of the time it works without having the OEM dealer tool. But I watched camshaft retard advance. I look at that data while the engine's running and the camshaft should stay around zero, one, two while it's running. It should fluctuate in that range. When you start seeing camshaft at six or eight or nine in either direction, then you know things are not lined up. This one stayed at zero or one all the time. And those two codes that I just mentioned are not present. The engine oil is clean, it's had a good service history. So when those things are all combined, I can say the timing chains are fine on this vehicle. Okay, so let's say somebody does get those two codes on their car. How long do they have before it breaks? You don't know how long. It could be a month. It could be a week. It could be a year. How long is it going to last? You're going to start seeing engine reduce performance and a lot of other issues. It's going to start misfiring. It's actually going to get so bad you're going to be like, I can't even drive this anymore. I need to get it in and get it fixed. That is a very expensive job. Depending on what shop or what part of the country, it can anywhere from three to five grand to get your timing chains replaced on this. You, can't do, you, you cannot do that while it's in the car. Just like here, it's almost an engine-out job. It is an engine-out job to do the timing chains on these. So if the timing chain broke, is it an interference engine? Yes, yeah, so it will destroy this engine. It'll be time for a not new timing chain. It'll be time for a new engine, which will probably be close to eight to 10 grand. So if you get those codes, don't wait around. Go get it done. I know you don't want to spend the money. I wouldn't want to spend it either. But it's pay five grand now, or four grand, or whatever it turns out to be, or pay 10 grand later. You need to choose which one, because you will be paying one or the other. Or get rid of the car. And that brings to point another really crazy issue. Any car lot that's taking trade-ins right now, and it's a good trade-in, that trade-in is not going to auction. It's staying right there on that lot. Which means when you do go to auction, what kind of cars are there? Turds. A whole sea of them. And EuroAsian Bob has mentioned that he's been to many auctions. He doesn't buy turds. He doesn't want to buy turds. He wants to sell good cars for people. And he's, he's actually got burned a few times lately and 
He's like, this is scary. He says, I need to really check these cars over. He says, I normally check them over really well, but he says, I have to spend so much time now really focus on this car. Is this a turd? Because eight out of 10 of them are. It's scary out there in the, in the auction world. So it did have a check engine light on. Fortunately, it was not the two codes I just mentioned. There were codes for auction sensors and specifically the rear ones. Just like this one. Now the sensor itself is fine. These have to get really hot to start reading a signal for the computer. And a way that they get it heated up really fast is they electrically heat it. There is a heater inside of here that heats it up fast so it can start reading. That's why on the old cars the auction sensors literally have one wire coming off of them. It takes a long time to get heated up and get a good reading and it really they just dealt with it back then. But with today's current mandates from the government they say we don't even want to wait that amount of time to start getting the emissions down. We want that auction sensor heated up now. So now there's not one wire, there's four. There's a set of wires to operate the sensor and a set to operate the heater. The codes that were in this vehicle were for the heater. The heater circuit has failed, which means it's burned out inside of the sensor. The fix for that is new sensors. Now it can be wiring, it can be a computer, but 99% of the time the sensor has failed. We'll get those sensors replaced, the rear main seal, and also the power steering pressure line was leaking. Let's take a look. You can see that it was seeping out of the crimp here. And if you follow it all the way over to the power steering pump, It's high, kind of hard to see, but it's been pouring down this line and onto the pump and dripping onto the ground. That line is leaking. We're going to also be replacing that, taking care of that leak as well. And there's one more really weird leak. Let's take a look. This is a really weird scenario. It also can be very angering for the customer. We quoted a certain amount of money to do the certain amount of things that we talked about. And once you get it apart, you find out something else is wrong just like these motor mounts. Let me show you guys. That black goo is not engine oil. That's actually fluid that's inside of this motor mount. Those motor mounts are shot. It's a hydraulic type of a fluid that's a dampener that absorbs vibrations. All of them are leaking a little bit out of there. This can throw you off to make you think you have an engine oil leak. I've been through this before many times. You say, no, it's the motor mounts. They're leaking oil. And the customer's like, come on, I'm not a dummy. Motor mounts don't have oil. Yes, they do. Today they do. They're filled with a fluid, a viscous fluid to absorb vibrations. And as you've just seen, it's leaking out of this thing. I've had that fight many times with customers. They actually have to come up to the shop and I show it to them and they just go, I never knew that they had oil in those. That's going to add to the cost of this repair. And I've ran against that before. I, we didn't talk about that. That's not part of the quote you gave me. I don't argue. I just say, that's fine. We'll put your old leaky ones back on and call it a day. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to put the old leaky ones back on. Okay, then you're going to pay me for them. You can't get free ones. I'm not donating them. So that's, that's a common thing to run up against when you're doing a big job like this is you're going to find other things wrong. You, as the customer, need to be prepared the price is probably going to go up more than they talked about. There are three of these mounts. I don't know. I haven't looked up the cost yet. We just found that out right now. I would estimate 100, 150 bucks per mount, somewhere around in there. There's not going to be any more labor. We already have them out. But you'd be surprised if people will fight over 100 extra dollars. It's really crazy. So we'll get that taken care of. That'll take care of that leak, a really strange leak. There's one more thing. On these cars, that is a huge failure point. And that is temperature HVAC actuators inside the dash. This is not actually for an Acadia. This goes to actually a different vehicle, but they're pretty much the same. It looks just like this in just about every vehicle. It's a plastic box with a little motor and some plastic gears. And this white piece opens and closes, flaps to change Temperature to change floor, vent, defrost. Whenever you change on your HVAC controls and you hear the air moving, 
It's these little guys that are actually doing the work. The sad thing is they engineered these very cheaply on every make and model and they put them in spots many times where to replace this the entire dash has to come out. Many of you have heard about the one and two thousand dollar actuator to replace because you had to pull the dash at least halfway if not all the way out. There are some actuators on these that the dash does have to come out. It's unfortunate because these are like forty bucks, fifty bucks. The other nine hundred and fifty is labor. It's really, really kind of crazy. I hate to give this news to people because it's so expensive for such a small part, but I can't help it. I didn't design the car. I didn't make it the way it is. I actually, I'll give you guys a customer story. It's really crazy. I actually had a guy, an older gentleman, come in. Same scenario. It was an older trailblazer. Same scenario. That's bad. The whole dash had to come out to replace it. And the customer really wasn't too mad about it until he showed up. What are we talking about here? What, what's an actuator? I said, I actually have a pile of old ones. Why don't you come down to the shop? I'll show it to you. He showed up and I let him look at it and he looked at it and he said, and then he got pissed. He said, a thousand dollars for this? I said, no, it's fifty dollars for that. It's nine hundred and fifty to pull your whole dash out. I said, you're welcome to do it yourself if you'd like to. Oh no, he says, I tell you what, I'm not going to do it myself. And he says, I'm also not paying the thousand dollars. You're not getting my money. He slammed the thing down. I said, so you're telling me it's hot, it's summertime, your car is stuck on full heat, and you're going to drive that way all summer long? He says, yes, I am. I am not paying that. I never heard from that guy again, and really, was it much of a loss? No. I tell you guys these stories not out of anger, not of trying to get at anyone. I tell you guys these stories because there's a whole other side of things when you're running a shop. Things that you don't hear about in a shop. All you know of is the car goes in and gets fixed and it comes out. But there's, there's crazy story, guys. I could do a whole other video. In fact, I might do another crazy customer video. It's really, really crazy stuff. So there's quite a lot of things to get done on this vehicle, and as you can see, hours and hours and hours of labor. We'll get all these things taken care of and this vehicle will have a clean bill of health. It'll be ready for the lot, ready for sale. Like I said, again guys, I can't believe that this kind of money a car dealer is paying this. Only because of the weird times we're in, they can still make money. So before this car left out of here and was done, I thought you guys could see a video on what the common issues with these are, how crazy a simple rear main seal can be on a newer front wheel drive or all wheel drive car. And some of the crazy stories I've dealt with in a shop. It really, I thought it'd be a good video for you guys. If you're curious what kind of tools me or Magic Mike use to get this far and get this deep into this car, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools we use here are for sale there and we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And yes, we got more videos coming, more projects, really sweet videos. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.